Chatters, chatties, welcome home for a Great American Chat, a podcast where we chat about Great American Media. I'm Chad Maurice, and in the house today, I have Jacqueline Hales, who stars in A Belgian Chocolate Christmas, which premieres this weekend on Great American Family. Jacqueline, welcome. Thank you for being here. And thank you for having me. (laughs) (laughs) Happy to be here. Now, before we talk about the movie, I want people to get to know you a little bit. Where, Where did you grow up? Um, I grew up, well, I was born in New York, uh, Syracuse, and then five years old to about 14 years old, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and then 14 to about 24, Utah, and now I live in Los Angeles. (laughs) Oh, okay. So when I was a kid, I lived in Rochester, New York, not too far from Syracuse. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually was in New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago filming a scene for a movie. Oh, wonderful. So uh, Beautiful. I love these coasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, how did you get into acting? Well, uh, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, there was this Seacoast Repertory Theater, uh, uh, this local theater that was uh, doing Alice in Wonderland. And I was five years old. I just moved there. (laughs) And um, I I just kind of knew that this is something I wanted to try. And my mom was sweet enough to take me to these auditions. And she took me to that one and I happened to land the shrunken Alice because I was five. So (laughs) I had one scene with the caterpillar and um, then I was hooked, as they say, you get the bug and you just keep going from there. So I did, I did stage and and all that for most of my childhood at that theater, the Seacoast Repertory Theater. And then when I moved to Utah is when I got into film because it's a little mini Hollywood over there in Salt Lake. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you do theater in high school and college? I was in the theater program, but uh, I actually was a little bit more focused on swim team in high school. (laughs) Oh, you're a swimmer. Oh, okay. Um, But I did get my first TV gig in, I think it was my junior year of high school, on a show called Everwood on CW. Yeah. And I remember I had to dye my hair platinum blonde because the character (laughs) was a Gwen Stefani lookalike, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And so that that was my first... TV thing. And, and then again, I was like hooked again to go further. I was like, okay, I do want this to be something that I make a career out of. And from there, oh. I went to Utah Valley University and studied and got a major there in theater performance. And the rest is history. Okay. <laughs> now, when you did, you did, were you just on one episode of Everwood? Yeah. It was a day yeah. play. Yeah. Did, did you get to meet uh, Treat Williams? No, actually, I wasn't in his scene. No. Um, I was with, oh my gosh, I don't remember his name now. I was, I'm, I was young at the time, but he, <laughs> he played Ephraim, the main guy, the main guy, the guy who played Oh Ephraim. yeah, I know who you mean. I know who you mean. I can't think of his name either, but I know it who was, you're It was about. a flashback. It was a flashback and he, um, he like comes up and like flirts with me. I'm like a waitress. It's a very, very short <laughs> bit. Yeah. <laughs> now you mentioned swimming when I was in college. I was actually the athletic trainer for the swim team uh, one semester. So, okay. so I know all the injuries that, uh, that swimmers mm-hmm. deal with. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, I, luckily, I never had an injury, but I was swim team captain. <laughs> oh, were you? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Now, yeah. I read, I don't know if this is true or not, I read that you were discovered by a modeling agent at a Janet Jackson concert. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> no way, really? Yeah. So in Utah, before I got my agent, like I, I, we had just kind of moved there and there was a Janet Jackson concert and I was just walking around because I actually don't, I'm a weird person. I don't love concerts. They're usually way too loud for me. I, I, know, I, I prefer me. listening to a CD I like privacy. Um, uh-huh. so I was like walking around like that at the time it was called the Delta Center. I think it's something else now, but um I was just walking around and some someone woman came up and scouted me as they do. And I went to this meeting and and I signed with this modeling agency, which actually ended up going nowhere. They wanted me to like uh, go to Italy for a time and I wanted to stick to swim team. So I I just my mind was in a different place. Also, they wanted I was muscular because of swim team. They wanted me to like lose an inch off my waist. And I was like, as a 15 year old, these are just all things that like weren't going to fly. So. Um, down the hall though, from that agency was an acting agency and that's who my, eventually became my first agent and how I got all my first TV gigs. So 
Ah, okay. It all worked out. <laughs> ah, was Everwood your first big gig that you booked? Yes, I yeah. I would say that was my first like big professional gig. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 For sure. Now, and then the first well, movie though was Unicorn City. That was oh, okay. the biggest thing because I was actually like a big part in that, so it was like mm -hmm. more of a chunky role. Okay. All right. Now I was flipping the TV around the other day. <laughs> and look what was on a sinister surrogate oh no kidding <laughs> let me move this down let me move, move the pictures around there we go i saw this when it first came out and i just caught the ending again the other day you played a really good psycho in this one. Oh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i was told that i played that villain a little too well maybe just because <laughs> no one should be that evil and that kind of thing now, do you, do you enjoy playing these darker characters? Oh, they're so fun. I love them. Yeah. I think that's, that's if you're not enjoying the role and having fun, then it's, it doesn't translate. So I think that's why that was a fun role and translated because it's like, I really enjoy it. Yeah, it was good because yeah. I, in real life, no, I'm, I like to think that I'm a, a sweet, kind person, but, <laughs> but getting the excuse to just go into those darker realms is always fun. <laughs> Now, now, which do you prefer, the, the thrillers like this or the romantic movies? Mm. It's a mood. You know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes you prefer ice cream. Sometimes you prefer pie. It's like, I <laughs> I don't know. It depends. I like them both. Yeah. It, yeah. Honestly, it comes down to the writing. It comes down to um, if, if it reads well, if it's a good thriller, if it's a good romantic comedy or whatever, mm -hmm. then, then great. I'm in. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Now, Great American Family, they've been showing a lot of the Brian Bruff and Brittany Wiscombe movies. Mm -hmm. And I know you've done a couple of them. You did. You were in Sense and Sensibility and Retreat to Paradise. Yes. But what, what's it like working with Brian and Brittany? Oh, fantastic. I mean, they, they've got their their machine well-oiled. Mm -hmm. they, they know what they're doing. They've made many of these films. Mm -hmm. You know what to expect. And I think my favorite thing about working with them is the fact that they work with the same crew the same family the whole time so when you go back especially the second time it, it's just so familiar and it's mm -hmm. you know the same same dp same boom same everything and um and so it's a lot more family feel and just mm -hmm. easy less anxiety you know yeah and you mentioned utah being like a, a little hollywood they're, they're actually based in utah their production yes. company right yeah yeah so before yeah. i moved to la i is when i booked my first i think my first brian Bruff film and then from there because I, I established that relationship when i moved to la i was fortunate enough to then get the call to come back so oh, so at okay. first I was in, in utah that's i think how i really got in with that crowd Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I got to say, in Retreat to Paradise, <clears throat> your hat game was strong. You're wearing those big sun hats. <laughs> True. I, I love that outfit. That, that yeah. outfit right there, that was my favorite, for sure. Yeah, you, yeah. you, 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 you look good in them. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about a Belgian chocolate Christmas. You know, you've been fortunate to film in some exotic locations. I know Retreat to Paradise was filmed in Fiji, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then this one was actually filmed in Belgium, right? Partially, yes. About all the exterior stuff is filmed in Belgium, um, for, I believe. And then a lot of the interior was filmed in L.A. Uh, okay. But it, that was it was one of the funnest, quickest and hardest shoots I've ever done just because of the speed. It was just so fast. I think we did the whole thing in 13 days yeah. and you know, there's a lot of one take wonders. Like we got to move, we got to move, we got to move. You know, we got to get uh -huh. through. <laughs> uh, we got a heart out of this building in five minutes. If you don't get it, you know, we're screwed. We have to change the script. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of pressure, but it's such a great exercise as a, as an actor to and mm -hmm. forces you to be very very prepared. Um, and Zane Stevens, my uh, co-star, was it was wonderful because we could he we would help each other. We'd run lines constantly. Mm -hmm. We're right, we're, we're up in five. We gotta, we gotta get this, and we'd run it, and we'd run it, and we'd run it, and then we'd go, and we'd get it in those one or two takes, and then we'd move on. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Now, had you, did you know Zane before this movie? No, no, no. we we met on the film. No. In fact, we both we met like at the uh, studio where we were getting uh, dressed for it. Like we were getting wardrobe was fitting us, 
so we met for the first time there and that's always funny because usually you get like a, a callback or a chemistry read or something mm -hmm. and, and we just lucked out that we got along well and, and it worked <laughs> uh -huh. is it is it sometimes difficult to create chemistry with someone that you just meet first day on set sure i mean yeah it's like you you really there, there's a reason that they have chemistry reads like you can mm -hmm. get into a place where you're like okay i really got to trick my brain into finding romance with this person uh -huh. um, <laughs> versus you know other times when obviously it just clicks for whatever reason mm -hmm. and like i said we really lucked out because we mm -hmm. never we were very very friendly we got it we got each other and and helped each other through the whole thing so that was great yeah now, I asked people on social media if they had any questions for you. And Lori Meeker wants to know, uh, had you been to Belgium before this movie? No, I hadn't. So I was, that was maybe one of the biggest sells <laughs> when I was pitching this movie. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, travel, cute uh -huh. Christmas movie, I'm in. Uh -huh. um, and, and we had so much fun there, too. It's like, obviously, most of it was shooting, so I didn't really get to explore too much. But I did get one full day to myself to kind of walk around and do whatever I wanted. And um, mm -hmm. I made the most of it. So. Yeah, that, that was Lori's next question. She, she wanted to know if you did any sightseeing while you were there. Not any, like, <laughs> actual legit sightseeing. sightseeing cause <laughs> I really didn't have that much time, but I just walked around that. I'm trying to think what the name of like that place was that we were like the square that we were it, um but there was like this big shopping place a big market that i walked around i went to a lot of good eats yeah um, of course there were those peeing kid statues everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah. belgium has so many of these little kid peeing statues it's like their thing really yeah yeah oh. I was like, like what is this it's, it's, they're everywhere they're just that's kid. funny. Yeah. You yeah. you this is in Brussels? Is that where you are? Brussels. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 That's where okay. Okay. So give me give me a synopsis about this movie. What what what's it all about? Okay. Uh well, the Kate, she is an aspiring or rather wished that she had fulfilled her original dream of becoming a a culinary master and she she kind of pivot pivoted somewhere in her life and became a food photographer. Like it was easier. It just okay. kind of came easier to her. And so she kind of always regretted that she didn't do that. An opportunity comes along from her best friend who did follow that dream. She has her own bakery and where she had gotten herself uh, some classes in Brussels to do some chocolate chocolatiering, learning that, and she can't go anymore. And so she tells me to go take her place. And I, I go and I have to act like I'm her because it's like her class or whatever. And then, you know, the, the cute instructor cue that mm -hmm. scene and um, he comes in and teaches me how to make chocolate properly. And then, you know, the whole life comes ah. to the play and all that stuff. You can imagine how it ends. <laughs> so did your character, she didn't go over there to take, uh, to take photography of what's going on. She went over there to learn how to make chocolate. Right. She's she's going ah, to kind okay. of like switch gears from the I life she you. started to the life she always wanted. I got you. I got you. So there's a little bit of mistaken identity going on here in the yes. storyline. Yes. Ah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, how did you get cast in this one? Um, I think I think it was like you said, I'd done a few other films that are streaming on Great American Family a lot. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. It was my my agent. It was just pitched to me. She she just uh, okay. hit me up and said this was offered. What do you think? And I said I think yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What what time what time of year did you film this one? We shot this last October, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. So so it wasn't ninety degrees like in the summertime when you're no, when you're filming Christmas movies. Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> actually, it was in L.A. when when we were shooting. The Christmas scenes there, it was. Oh yeah, there. In October, okay. it, was, it was actually still very yeah. So there were uh, okay. scenes where I'm in a winter coat and they had to keep dabbing me. It was <laughs> so hot in Belgium, it's fine. It was. Uh -huh. It was like just chilly enough. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. and, uh, ooh, yeah. I, I'm thinking of a few scenes where, like, I would, I was even tripping up on some lines. I was so hot. I was like, I guys, I can't. Think right now. I gotta like 
cool off for five minutes and then get back into the coat. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was a struggle. A little. Yeah. Yeah. I hear from everyone filming Christmas movies in the summer yeah. is a, a, a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you, do we get any chocolate making scenes in this one? Oh yes. We have oh, legit yeah. chocolate making scenes. We have, um, in Belgium, we were fortunate enough to get a proper class from like a real chocolatier. Ah, nice. I'm trying to, I want to, I want to do a shout out to their chocolate thing. And I can't think of their company right now. Um, but we, we were taught, you'll see it actually in the film. So there you go. Uh, but the, we really are making chocolate in that scene. There's one scene where we go and we like learn from this guy and, uh, we're legit making chocolate and and then i got to take those home it was really fun oh neat yeah it looks like the scene i got i have there in the upper right corner it looks like you're making chocolate there in that scene uh that is actually is that a scene where he's pretending to teach me how to make chocolate at his okay supposed studio and that's actually in la shop. okay and um, okay i got you and uh we are definitely not really making chocolate we are pretending <laughs> But that's fun. You got to take a few lessons and, and oh yeah, them. yeah that yeah that's neat. That was a really cool experience for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now Lori Meeker also wanted to know: Did you get to try any Belgian chocolate while you were there? Oh yes, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. Huh. How much? How much chocolate did you eat while filming this thing? I mean, a box full. <laughs> At least. I mean, I was you know nibbling a ton just yeah. it's right there in front of you and. You got to do several takes. Uh -huh. You got to. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, no. And it really weirdly does taste somehow better than any chocolate you've ever tasted. I don't know what Belgium's doing, but it's really uh, good over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a scene that you had the most fun filming? Is there one you can think of? Um. Yeah. There. So, well, the one where I learned chocolate, obviously, was probably the most fun scene that I did because mm -hmm. it was like you're working okay. and you're working and it's just fun and you're eating chocolate <laughs> but yeah. I'm thinking of my favorite just scene as an actor it's it's one of the end scenes that I can't really talk to you about because it will spoil it but mm -hmm. right. it was such a great acting scene for for Zane and I to to just kind of connect on that level and it just felt really grounded and just like because so much of it is is kind of zany and like um fun you know and then this was okay. like a really like we could really connect and just have this fun acting scene and it was it was at night and it's near the end and it's i i, I can't really describe it beyond that um but it was our last shot of the entire movie not the movie edited but in the sequence that we shot it it was the last thing we shot okay and okay so we were tired and we were cold and so you wouldn't think that would be my favorite thing but <laughs> as an actor it was really fun now, I saw some posts on social media. What about the, this Ferris wheel scene? Didn't you shoot a scene up in a Ferris wheel? Yeah, that wasn't my most fun. That was <laughs> I bet. that was terrifying. That was I had no idea. I don't know what happened. I didn't used to be so afraid of heights, but somewhere along the line, I must have developed this fear because I got up there. I, I wasn't expecting to be so afraid, and I got up there, and I was suddenly just so terrified, and I was uh -huh. legit white knuckling just gripping the sides trying to like <laughs> pretend like I'm casual and doing the scene and I'm just like <laughs> really scared. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. We had and we had to do that quite a few times. We were up there for at least an hour. Yeah, I don't like heights either. And I don't like Ferris wheels. So yeah, that <laughs> I don't know how well I would do that. You could see like all of Brussels. It was awesome. And terrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now who who directed this? Um, Max, and he's got this. Yeah, cool I couldn't. Last I, name. Looked, I looked up his name and I couldn't pronounce I, it. So honestly, I, was like, I can't really. Max, okay, something. I didn't feel okay. Ugh, something. Uh -huh. Um, all right, like Swedish. I don't know exactly where it's from. Okay, Max. okay, <laughs> okay, okay. How was Max E? How was he? How was he to work with? Great. He was. He was Great. so accommodating. I'm. I remember my first day on set. I. It, it was very overwhelming. There was a lot to do. There was um, tons and tons of scenes. It was this. It was one of the days where I, I got super super hot and I had to take a break. And he was just so accommodating and 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 helped me get through that first day. And and mm -hmm. then we were just 
going after that. So having that shorthand with a with a director is really nice. Mm -hmm. he, now what did you do? Did, nice. did you film all the LA scenes first, and then the whole crew went to to Brussels to film the Brussels scenes, yes. or what? Yeah, and and so it was only it was only the me, Zane, Max, and and then like maybe th th three crew, like two producers, the DP. And then, so when we got there, it was like, I I now was doing my makeup and Zane's makeup and I would like, <laughs> started to like switch and we, cause we needed to be kind of like a gorilla team going around, like just getting the shot, you know what I mean? And, yeah, okay. And, um, but we made it work and, and it was really fun that way. Just this tiny little crew running around, but in LA it was a full fledged crew. Uh, okay. So a skeleton crew there in Belgium. Yes. All right. Yes. Now. How about were you able to improvise at all in this thing, or did the, did the director prefer you to stick close to the script? Uh, it, it depended on the scene. For the most part, yeah. we stuck to the script. Uh, but I mean, they, they weren't they weren't upset if like you, if you like one or two words were exchanged for synonym or whatever. But yeah. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, I'm trying to think if there was anything majorly improv. I haven't seen the final cut, so I, I don't know if they kept anything. But <laughs> sometimes, yeah, we would just we would play. But for the most part, we stuck. To All right. OK, I know some directors, they they do like the, the first couple takes uh, stuck what the script says, and then they'll let you kind of do whatever you want on a, on a, on a take yeah. and kind of I mean, once, improvise once a little. Once we get it, it was fine. But like I said, we were mm -hmm. on such a tight shooting schedule it was kind of like if you got mm -hmm. it we're moving on <laughs> yeah 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 well i look forward to, to seeing this film me too me too it'll be my first now we have to talk about something that you're involved in yes and that's you created a podcast called the bystanders i did which is exciting to, yeah to, to, which is a little bit different from your usual podcast, right? So t tell me about this. So yeah, it's not like a chat podcast. It's a scripted, mm -hmm. uh, like an old time radio show. And it's a comedy, which is kind of rare for the scripted podcasts out there. Um, and we have an all-star cast, uh, Kathleen Turner, um, Margaret Cho, Beth Dover, Jolo Trulio, uh, Wayne Knight, Jane Lynch, mm -hmm. Darren Chris, John Grice. So yeah. many wonderful people are in it. And um it was such a great, so I created this with Ash Lenzan uh, and we, we, we wrote and directed season one. And then this season we came on, we got two more writers. We have Heather Morris from Glee and uh, Nick Bolton helped write as well. And um, th this season's just bigger, better. And, 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 and it's not attached to season one. You can watch season two without seeing season one. Cause it's a brand new set of bystanders. Oh, okay. So it's a new okay. story. And the whole concept is it's based around the bystander effect, which is the theory that the more people that are around, the less likely you are to help in a situation. So there's always that inciting mm -hmm. incident at the beginning of a season. And then we, go, we see what happens to those bystanders after. So zany comedy, it's kind of dark sometimes, but in a happy <laughs> way, <laughs> and um, and it's such a good time. And you can you can listen to this on either Apple Podcasts or you can go to thebystanderspodcast.com to own it and and actually download it. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, yeah. When I was listening, when I was listening to it, it, re it reminded me of like an old time radio show. Yep, exactly. We wanted yeah. that. We wanted to have yeah. that big play effect, like because the the score mm -hmm. done by Tori Cummins. Um, is is just i think it, it makes it it really makes it, it kind of brings it to life it, it takes the story and the writing and it just brings you into this world that envelops you it, like you said like an old time radio show mm -hmm. yeah when i was a kid i used to listen to this show on the radio radio called mystery theater and then this kind of reminds me of that, of that mystery theater show yeah so it's cool. it really is it really <laughs> is it's such a good time and it, it's an easy listen um preferred on headphones or in the car, I think, because you can get that surround sound because we mixed it at Dolby Surround Sound in Nashville. So we've got this, this incredible sound going that I don't think a lot of the other podcasts have that quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about, let's go back, talk a little bit about your career. Is there a role that you auditioned for that you didn't book that really bummed you out? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> for all, probably many of them. Many, right? many, sure. But <laughs> one that really comes to mind um, was Supergirl. Like I'm 5'11", I'm a tall girl. And so Supergirl was one of these roles that before that TV show came out, I, uh, I had always thought to myself, I could be a Supergirl, you know? Uh-huh. I was younger too. <laughs> and and uh, at 5'11", I was like, this is one of those roles they can't put my height against me. Because my height does, you know, that is a problem sometimes. Yeah. And, um, and so I was just like, and then I got the audition suddenly one day. I was like, for Supergirl, I was like, oh my gosh, it's meant to be. And and I, I got a call back and everything and I didn't get it. But No way. Was this the Supergirl that... that- well, yeah. debuted on CBS. Yeah, a few years ago. Wow, yeah. you auditioned for that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, oh. I, I do believe that you get the parts you're supposed to get. So it's it, it's it was sad, but it's also like good for. I think it's Melissa. Is her name Alyssa? Or- yeah, and actually, she was on Glee with Heather Morris. He was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so it, yeah, you know, it's like fantastic. Obviously, that role was always hers and meant to be her, hers, but that was one of those ones where I was like, no, I thought that that was my destiny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been big. Yeah. Uh, tell me, is there a person who has had the biggest impact on your career? Is there someone you can think of? Um, like inspiration? Hmm. Yeah. Or someone that... I mean, that, that, everybody, right? It's like all of... I mean... <laughs> Anyone who's out there trying to do what we do, we do is inspiring. Um, yeah. As far as just direct influence, on my- like, like a mentor or something, is there anyone that you can think of? Um, you know, I I've been involved in improv since since Utah. I was part of this troupe called the Thrillionaires, and I had that group of friends that I started that with. Um, a lot of them moved out to LA around the same time and, and we continued to do improv there. And the reason that impacted me the most is because it was like that constant training to to build up confidence in yourself mm-hmm. and, and also just having that uh, environment and that show experience. Um, it just keeps you sharp as an actor. And I, I mm-hmm. feel like without that training and those, that, those friends and that, that, family that you kind of build around you Mm -hmm. it's really hard to to keep at it you know it's like you gotta have it's it's about who can stick around the longest right they say that a lot (laughs) and and so having the friends there helps you stick around and then also having the the improv training has helped me to just build the confidence needed for auditioning for just Mm -hmm. Acting in general. So I I always recommend, I used to teach acting too. And so I always recommend to my students, you know, go, go try improv because that's just a really good way to stay sharp at your craft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had an acting coach that told me that improv is the most important class you can take. Really? Oh, well, there you go. That that, that was her opinion. Sure. I mean, yeah, it's all (laughs) subjective, but for sure for me, that was, I think one of the biggest things that helped continually improve me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to end this. Since we're talking about Christmas in July, <laughs> let's end, end this with some, some uh, fun Christmas uh, questions. Okay. What is your favorite Christmas movie? Ooh. <laughs> mm, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot. But probably The Family Stone. Have you seen The Family Stone? Oh, okay. I've never seen that. Okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about, but I've never seen it. Or, or Christmas Vacation. I've seen it a million times. As that you know, oh, yeah. close, close second, but probably the uh, family stone is my favorite. It's got Sarah, okay. Jessica Parker, Diane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll have to watch it. Yeah. It's great. Now, is it, is there a favorite, you have a favorite movie or TV show that you've been in? Is there one that stands out? Yes. It's, oh. it's Legion. And I, I, play, Legion. Okay. I play a younger Jean Smart and, um, working with her was, Mm-hmm. one of the best moments of my career. She was just so wonderful to work with and just so graceful and just so um, great. I, I, I remember one day on set, they t- they surprised me that I was going to have to do her lines as well because we do this mirror sequence where we're kind of like, it's not a real mirror, obviously. We're just facing each other and it's supposed to 
seem like we're mirroring each other. And, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know I was going to have to say her lines as well. And so at the <laughs> last second, they're like, okay, we're turning the camera around. It's your turn. And I'm like, oh. And so <laughs> she was so sweet. And I just, I, she worked with me while they were setting up and like turning around. She worked with me to, to get the lines. And then I don't know if it was adrenaline or what, but I got it out and, and I, I felt good about it. And, um, uh, and it's because she was sweet enough to sit there and, and work them with me. And you, you, you didn't have her lines memorized. Huh? Well, I did loosely <laughs> and there yeah. too many. It was like four, four or five or something like that. Yeah. How, 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 how good are you at, at memorizing lines? Are you quick? Can you do it fast? Uh, I think I used to be quicker, but I, I, yeah, it takes me about a, let's see if we're doing, I just recently memorized a, about a six page audition. I think it took me about an hour. Something. Wow. You can memorize six pages in an hour. <laughs> yeah, no. I, mean, I mean, it's memorized, but is it solid? Is it like, like I still need to do more work. Like, could I get it out? Yes. But it's, Wow. You know, I still like to put in a few more, a lot more time than that to just because now it's memorized. Now you have to go in and like think of choices and think of right, how right. to make it interesting. <laughs> Do you have a photographic memory? No, 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 no. <laughs> that's, Not that's amazing. Yeah. Holy man, it takes me several days to memorize six pages. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I guess I've been memorizing since I was five, so it's a must. Yeah. Yeah, lots of practice. Now, since your movie is about chocolate, yeah, what's your favorite Christmas candy or chocolate? Uh, well, I'm a sucker for Snickers, but it's not fancy. Oh, oh okay. This is Easter, but I do like I do like Cadbury eggs. Okay. <laughs> I don't right. know. All I, right. As far as chocolate, I mean, you like. Let me ask you this: You like milk chocolate, dark chocolate, or white chocolate? Definitely not white chocolate. Dark okay. chocolate and milk chocolate, I, I can go between. Those are, that's also a mood thing. You know, am I one milk chocolate or am I one dark? I can go back and forth. I just like chocolate in general. All right. So, How about, do you, have a, do you have a favorite Christmas cookie? A Christmas cookie? Uh, I mean, maybe a sugar cookie with the frosting. But I don't really get into sugar cookies too much, though. I'm really, no. I'm not much of a cookie. I'm really just a chocolate chip kind of cookie person. So it's not like it's okay. Christmassy, but maybe if we throw some right. red and green sprinkles on it, that counts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any uh, future projects that you're allowed to talk about? Right now, I've just been, because the Bystanders just released like two weeks ago. That's mm -hmm. kind of all that we've been focused on. I've been doing the marketing for that. So right now, we're, gonna, we're hoping to turn that into a visual, to a TV show. So, oh, you are? Yeah. Oh. So I'm hoping oh, okay. that's next as a TV show, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Anything can happen. Okay. An actor's like, I could get a call tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, it could be anything. <laughs> okay. How about tell people your social media handles so they can follow you? My Instagram, which is really the only thing I'm on. Um, I technically right. have all the other ones, but I don't even know their handles. That's how little I'm on them. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's just at Jacqueline Hales. How, how okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> well, a Belgian chocolate Christmas premieres this Saturday at eight o'clock Eastern on Great American Family and the Bystanders podcast. People can find on Apple Podcast and on the website, right? The website, the bystanderspodcast.com. Bystanderspodcast.com. Jacqueline, thank you so much for taking the time and, and being here with me. And thank you so much. This has been fun. <laughs> it's always fun to, to, to chat and, and get to know new people. Oh, for sure. And thank you. And thank you, chatters, for being here. And until next time, you keep the faith, keep smiling, keep your friends close, and keep your great American family closer. <laughs> <laughs>